Hi everyone, welcome back to another super cool tutorial that's going to blow your mind. Today, we're taking a deep dive into something awesome, decentralized apps or dApps. And we're bringing the power of Web3 tech to your iPhones. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the simple steps to make your Swift UI app connect with Ethereum-based dApps using the super slick MetaMask iOS SDK. It's going to be breeze, so let's not waste any time. Let's get started and make some magic happen. Make sure remember to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future contents. So before we get started, let's quickly break down what Web3 and depths are. Okay, so Web 1.0. This is the early stage, like the online baby steps. It's all about the basic uh, web pages and information sharing. Think of it as a digital library where you can read stuff but not really interact much. And Web 2.0 This is the social and interactive phase. It's like the internet grew up and got super chatty. Web 2.0 brought us social media, online shopping, and apps that let us connect, share, and play together. It's the internet we're most familiar with today. Web 3.0 Web 3.0 is about a decentralization and empowerment. Imagine if your data wasn't controlled by big companies, but by you and everyone else using the internet. It's like uh, taking the power back. Web 3.0 uses a blockchain and a smart contracts to make things more transparent, secure, and give users more control. It's all about creating fairer and more open online world. So in the nutshell, Web 1.0 was re reading, Web 2.0 was socializing, and Web 3.0 is like a digital revolution where you are in charge. So here is uh, some example on dApps or dApps. So dApp is like a supercharged app that runs on blockchain, which is a secure and a transparent digital system. Instead of being controlled by a single company, a dApp works on a network of computers owned by lots of different people. This makes it more open, fair, and resistant to sneaky stuff. So imagine a game where you can own and trade in-game in -game items for real money, or a social media platform where your data is under your control, not some big corporations. That's the power of a dApp it's like a regular app, but with a lot more freedom and awesome possibilities. So to begin our journey, uh, we're going to head over to the official MetaMask documentation to understand the process we will be following. Okay, so for this first part of the tutorial, we're going to go through some few steps here. Uh, we're going to go through the steps, uh, step one, uh, in install the SDK, importing the SDK, and also connect your your dApp. So now you get some understanding about what we're gonna do. So let's jump right into the coding part. Okay, so here I already pre-created a uh, template of this application. So we're gonna go with um, integrating the SDK first, then maybe we can add some UI to it to make sure it looks nice. Uh, so let's head back to the documentation again, and let's go grab what we need. So as you can see that you can import MetaMask SDK into your native uh, iOS app to enable your users to easily connect with their MetaMask mobile wallet. Uh, so we need iOS project setup and it supports at least iOS 14 plus. So we're gonna copy this URL here and so we can integrate the, we can pull in this as a package. And then we can integrate it by importing the SDK Call MetaMask underscore iOS underscore SDK. And then we're going to come back to follow with this step here. Okay, so head to the project and go to the project here and package dependencies. And let's integrate with uh, a MetaMask. That's importing that. So we're going to go with the next miner. So get some more update if we need to. Um, 
get a li little bit newer version of the update. Uh, let's edit the package. Okay. So now we have the socket, uh, star screen, MetaMask iOS SDK. So now we can go to the content view here. We can add the import. MetaMask iOS SDK. Okay, let's go back to the documentation, see what else we need to do. Okay, so in order to connect your DAP by adding the following code to your project, so we need to add a, a observe the object, and then we need to call it let uh, DAP equal to DAP name and URL, and this is the same as calling the ETH request accounts. So then we can connect to it. By default, Adamask logs three SDK events, uh, connection request, connected, and disconnected. This allows uh, MetaMask to monitor SDK connection issues. To disable this, set MetaMask.shared.enable-debug to false, uh, or Ethereum-enable-debug to false. Okay, so we're gonna maybe create a, a data model first, and then um, we can add this code here, add this code here. So we're gonna copy right here, and we're gonna create a data model for this, so we can properly utilize, uh, we can properly separate the UI code and also the SDK part of code, or any logic need to be added into it. So let's start by creating a um, separate group. I'm just gonna call view model. I'm gonna drag this down. And I'm gonna create another group called a view. And I'm gonna drag this content view into this view here. I'm gonna leave that outside there. I'm gonna create a new uh, file for the view model. I'm gonna call it MetaMask repo. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make a class MetaMask repo. I'm gonna make it a observed, observable object, just in case we might need it, use it, uh, and import the MetaMask right here instead. And we can remove this import right here. And then we can try to copy paste this code here and see what we need to do. Uh, so basically we need to observe, uh, we need to observe this Ethereum changes and then we need to have this to be called. We can probably init, have a custom init. Uh, we probably can put those code inside here. So when this survey model starts, we want to call this the Ethereum and to connect to it. Okay, so looks like we have this on our attribute here. Uh, the only thing we need to do is actually import the Swift UI. And this should go away. So every single time when we initial this, we will connect to the D app, and we're gonna have we're gonna just put this as a private, and same as the URL for for now. And I, I believe we need to actually find out the actual URL and the name we need to, the application uh, we need to connect to so that we can actually run this successfully. But we can try this out. Maybe it uh, could be a test in the, doc in the document, found the documentation. Okay, now, so let's go back to the view and to create our view model. Called meta mask ripple. You go to meta mask ripple. And let's do a quick run. Uh, when this uh, when this uh, Swift UI starts, it should be able to trigger an initialization and should be triggers the 
um, the ethereum.net. Okay, let's do a quick run. Oh, looks like we're missing something. Socket engine does not conform to the protocol. It looks like the socket I.O. might have some issues from the third party. Okay, we had a minor issue there, but no worry, I already resolved that issue there. So we should be run this app, should be able to run this app now. Alrighty, so looks like we were able to launch that and uh, do something about it. Let's see if the console have anything about it. So SD connect to the server. Okay. It looks like we didn't connect to the right URL um, as it showed up right here. So we just need to find a proper dApp URL we should uh, connect to and then we can come back to test this again. Okay, so after some uh, testing and uh, issues, I encountered some uh, problems, uh, but I, I didn't figure out uh, exactly what we need to get this app to start to running. So basically, uh, we do need to download the Atomask uh, application so we can properly testing out this uh, wallet, or you can use anything. You can use a Coinbase or any other D app applications. But in our case, we want to connect to MetaMask wallet so so that we can retrieving information on the wallet we can see the balance and all the stuff so we can create our own mobile application to uh, have our own features and uh, supporting different functionalities so we're going to use the http uh, preferably https metamask.io and uh, we're going to connect to the, the metamask uh, d app uh, on the actual device so I'm gonna have this uh, screen share, uh, screen recording uh, to show you guys uh, what's that like. All right, let's start. And yes, you can see right here that we're successfully connected to our MetaMask wallet. And then I can click on this connect to properly connect to our app and also at a console here you can see connection is ready and receive wallet info so from now on we'll be able to make a, an, an any other calls that we might need so that we can actually extract the information from the metamask wallet all right so now let's go adding some basic ui for it so that we can actually have proper UI functionality to test that out. And I wonder if there's any other information we can actually extracting from this Ethereum uh, observed object. So maybe we can observe, uh, so let's say publish, that is a good thing. Maybe we can observe um, selected address, uh, chain ID is active, selected MetaMask account chain. Um, select the address so maybe you can uh, display the address the the public address so that you can actually see uh, from the swift ui level so let's go to the view and create a button to trigger this connection instead so we're going to make a slightly change here we are gonna keep, still keep observing that um, we're just gonna be creating a function called uh, connect to the app. We're going to move all this code into there. And then we're going to go back to our content view here. Uh, we're going to have uh, a name for it. Gonna call Meta Swift UI. I'm gonna give it a title. Uh, not 
title for it. And then we're going to give a button, uh, or actually a label, a uh, text. So we're going to connect the MetaMask ripple.ethereum. Uh, we're going to display the select address. And font uh, can be actually use weight, font weight dot bold. And then uh, for under beneath that, we can have a button. I think we're missing something here. Now we should be able to tap it. And okay. So now we want to add the action of a meta meta report dot um, connect to the app. Uh, we're just gonna have a text says connect to MetaMask. Gonna give a basic frame. Give a border. Okay, so uh, I just need to go to the MetaMask and uh, disconnect. I already connected uh, the app, then uh, and already connected uh, the app. Then we can reconnect again to double check. Okay, here we go. We're gonna connect again. And now we're going to tap on the connect to MetaMask. And now it's going to re-ask us to connect to this side again. And we're going to say yes, connect. And now send us back to the app. Then from now on, the application can handle some more UI and information for the users or any feature you want to promote it to the user. So that's a wrap for today's tutorial. Uh, but our journey into the world of dApps and a Web3 is a far from over. In our next video, uh, I'll be diving deeper into getting the chain ID and uh, getting the account balance. So make sure you're subscribed and uh, stay tuned for the next video. And there you have it, folks. Uh, we successfully integrated the MetaMask iOS SDK into our Swift UI app, bringing the power of a Web3 and a decentralized applications to the iOS world. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And as always, leave your comments and questions down below, and I'll be more than happy to help you.